Hello and good afternoon, welcome to New Forest Morphs and today we're going to be answering a few more of your questions and one of the questions that uh, was given to us uh, this week on our 300 subscriber giveaway video was from uh, Kevin Quach, Quach and he asked how to keep humidity levels uh, under control when at the right level and I think that's a really good question um, Kevin. He did ask a couple of other questions which I'm going to cover when we do our incubation and some other videos that Jack and I can do tomorrow which hopefully we'll be setting up an incubation box and doing a bit more detail on uh, temperatures and getting ready for the egg hatching season which is only around the corner. Some of you may already be experiencing girls that are ovulating and that will be laying soon so even though we don't actually have any eggs yet I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a setup uh, egg box, hatch box tomorrow if Jad's available. But let's just talk about, um, before we talk about humidity levels, I just wanted to share a little thought, um, which is, we. this is by Gary Player, and talks about learning from our mistakes. And he says, we learn the most, we learn the most through our mistakes, not our successes, and we grow the most in tough times, which I think is very appropriate. It's interesting that we learn more so by our mistakes than we do by our successes. So if you're making a few mistakes, I don't want you to worry. <laughs> I've made loads of mistakes and I'm going to make loads more mistakes in the future. It's part of life. Um, and hopefully these videos, today I'm, I'm, when we go through humidity, I'm probably going to show you a few of my mistakes out here. So don't hold me up as being perfect at all because I make a lot of mistakes. And hopefully you, know, you can relate to that a little bit because we all make mistakes. Um, but they, Gary also went on to say, if you can get your head around this and see tough times as a chance for growth and deeper meaning, that tough times are a chance for growth and deeper meaning, you will arm yourself with the most powerful mental weapon known to the man. And that weapon is optimism. <laughs> So yeah, be optimistic guys, I know it's hard out there, but let's be positive and try to turn any of this negative energy into positive energy, and let's use our snakes to help us do that. So, let's get back to the question which Kevin has uh, given us, and the question is, what is, first of all, what is humidity? Now, Mandy's giving me strict instructions not to ask her any questions, so I won't ask you any questions, Mandy. <laughs> She's smiling behind the camera at me. But, um, humidity is basically moisture in the air. It's the amount of water vapour that holds in the air effectively. And there's lots of different ways of measuring that. And I've got a, uh, what they call, I think it's called a hygrometer, which is a special digital device that I have, which I go in the rubs and I check my humidity levels inside my facility. And in here, we've currently got, when I woke up this morning, it was really misty outside in the forest and the humidity um, in the facility went up to about, I think it was about 40 degrees in, in the facility. I'm not talking about inside the rubs. So I like the humidity in my facility to be around about 35 to 45 in this area. But actually the best humidity range that we should be aiming for inside the rubs so about that, we had a little bit of a technical glitch there. I think another one of my memory cards ended up <laughs> running out. So we've had to run out and get another one. Apologies for being cut off there. But yeah, we're talking about the best ideal range for humidity levels. Now, um, normally it's between 50 and 65 degrees humidity is what you're trying to achieve inside the rub. Um, but obviously that will vary depending on what the snake needs. So even though that's the typical recommendation, there are times when snakes are in shed where I might lift that to 70, even 80, even more, depending on where they're going. And it would only be for a temporary day or so. And I'll show you some of the examples I've got out here. I've actually got one of my digital readers out on one of my snakes. And I'll show you um, what the humidity level is on there because this girl's in shed and she needs assistance to shed. So I've kind of sprayed her down with warm water and I've also put some extra water into her substrate. So you'll find that her rub will have condensation outside and we'll show you those in a second. So the other, the other exception to the rule is of course when it comes to incubation, um, eggs need between 95 and 100% humidity which is very high. Now that doesn't mean to say that any water should fall on the eggs. It's very important that no water condensation drops onto the eggs because it can damage the eggs and kill the eggs. 
so tomorrow if Jared is up for it we'll set some things up and we'll talk more detail about that and so when it comes to humidity remember there's a difference between what you need in the rubs and what you need in your hatch box also bearing in mind that you as the keeper and carer need to monitor your snakes and adjust up and down depending on what your snakes need so if you've got a snake that's stuck in shed you want to lift up your humidity and I think we did a video last week where Jared and I actually bathed two of our snakes that we imported and uh, showed you how to get soft sheds off, um, soften up the shed and how to moisten them up using a bath and please have a look at that one if you've got any snakes that are in shed that, um, that are actually stuck in shed then have a look at that video because that's quite a way, good way of helping out your snakes. Okay so how do we go about managing it? I think the best thing really is for me to show you how I manage these. So why don't we just have a little walkabout. Mandy, come and join us and we'll just show you one or two snakes. Now, just a bit of an update. Uh, this morning I popped in to do the cleaning and we got a sixth lock. And I, I'll show you that footage, but um, we had the, I'm trying to remember which one it was now. I think it was the one, oh, we're actually here. Come and have a look at this, Mandy. So, because the Desert Ghost is really strong and he's 1200 grams, um, I decided to move in and out of the three different breeding rotations. You know, you've got the first breeding rotation, which is where one male could go up to three girls every week. And then you've got a second one, which we tend to do, which is where one male goes to one female in one week, then he has a rest, and then he goes to the next female the second week, then he has a rest. Well, be open-minded because and not be rigid because each snake can move in and out of those three models that I showed you on the other video. So I think it was about yesterday or just yesterday I decided to move Johan, the Desert Ghost Enchi, into my Pastel Girl because my Pastel Girl was in shed at the time before this and she got out of shed and I thought this is a prime opportunity before feeding day tomorrow to move Johan into her to get her locked because she's so big that I'd like him to have one more lock. She's already had three locks from here, and I think this is the fourth one. <laughs> the humidity levels in there, it'd be interesting to put the um, digital reader on there, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's as high as 85 or 90 in there. It looks very wet, doesn't it? But when they're um, breeding, uh, Mandy, when they're breeding, um, it's, that's, this is where the humidity um, fluctuates we sort of like the eggs going up to 90 to 100 when they're breeding they like it quite warm and they like it quite humid for some reason but it helps them stimulates them and they they did that themselves i did nothing at all that was kind of quite clean and dry in there before i put him in there but just in a day the girls tipped over a water bowl she's weed and pooed everywhere they both had a good old session in there and they've created a really hot um, steamy environment to create that romantic love <laughs> so anyway uh, enough of that, let's move on to uh, more things here. So let's go to my um, hygrometer. High now there's 84 de degrees there. So 84% is very high. So, so? You see that? 80, not actually 84%. The 84%, yeah, so 84%. So let's open up and see why I've done this. And the reason I've done that, to show you, we've got Perlo, who's our uh, Mojave Lesser Bell, who is in deep shed. I'm going to show you how I can tell she's in deep shed, or he's in deep shed. Just look at the eyes, Mandy. You see, a blue-eyed Lucy's got grey eyes now, and a white snake goes pink. And that's an indication that your snake is going into deep blue, deep shed. And to help him shed, he has, he has created this atmosphere himself. He's wet all his bedding down. He's brought his water bowl closer to the, humid, to the temperature pad to get the water up. And there's a lot of condensation in there that he wants to shed out. So I've had to do very little to help him. He's helping himself. So the best control, <laughs> usually the best control for humidity is the snake itself. If you give him the resources, give him a decent sized water bowl, give him the flexibility to move that bowl where he wants to move. So I'm not a firm believer in these rigid bowls. You can buy um, various racking systems that have fixed bowls 
and then you put in a deli cup and you just change the deli cup. That's convenient for us, but I think it restricts what the snake can do because it can't move that water onto its heat range to change things, to get the humidity that it wants. So if you're gonna go for a fixed bowl situation, you have to use other methods to get the humidity right. But I like the flexibility of a bowl because the snake will move the bowl or tip the bowl. Sometimes it tips the bowl because it needs extra moisture. <laughs> you know, and, and it's not because it's being foolish or stupid, it's because it needs it. So I never, um, I never judge a snake's ability because normally they know what they need. And if we respect that, they normally get it right. Not every time, but most times. So there we go. Now you can see that since I've bought this out, the percentage in the, of the reading is dropping down to 57. And there's a little probe on here. If I show you the probe. So what you've got is you've got a probe here. So put the probe inside the rub. Make sure that it's not leaning against any water, that it's actually suspended in the air. Very important. Otherwise you're going to get the wrong reading. A lot of mistakes people make is they let that lie against the condensation on the side, inside of the rub and they think oh my goodness me I've got high humidity but in actual fact that could give you a 15 degree 15 percent difference in your reading so try to get it suspended in the air and that's why you have these little suction pads on them often so that you can actually stick them on the inside and have it suspending and now you can see it's dropping down so let's have a look at one or two other snakes while we're here now I've got one down here which is stuck in shed which is Lala. Do you want to have a look at that one? Shall I show you what we're doing here? The so Lala, she's not completely stuck in shed. Have a look at her. Now you want to come around the back of her neck. Look at her head and neck maybe and zoom in on that. So she shed out the majority of her shed about a week ago but for the last few days, she's been stuck with a little bit of shed on her neck. And there's two, two options you've got. I've been giving her a little bit of warm water spray and the water I've put in that I spray is about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So they don't get shocked. And then they'll take it off themselves. Now, if they don't, then we can make a bath for her and then we can let her sit in that bath again, round about and, and, uh, I think we did about a 90 degree bath for her, shallow water. There's a video on how to do this on our Care 2 series. Give it 30 minutes to soak in there and then the skin will moisten and then you can assist it with your thumb and gently, gently peel back that skin and get her out of shed. Okay, so there's another example of how in one rub we've got the right humidity. In this rub, I've got a question why she's stuck in shed. And I think I've realized what it is. The heater, my heater, is opposite her rub. So she's getting the full impact of that heater. <laughs> Even though I've got fans that are circulating the heat, I think that this snake is possibly being exposed to extra heat, which is the heat will actually absorb all the water air vapor and dry her out. So she's obviously drying out. So I've got to keep an extra eye on her. Or I could move the heater but I like the heater there because it kind of covers most of my adults. Um, but I could, re, I could redo the heater position or I could just keep an extra eye on her and make sure I spray her down three or four days before she's ready to go. So there's another example of how we've got to be careful with our humidity. And there's a mistake I've made, which I can turn into my strength. But the key is to monitor your snakes twice a day and go into each rub and see what's going on. And the quicker you pick up the problem, the quicker you can sort it. Right, let's move on to another one. So here we have Athena. Now Athena is our pied girl. She's just locked up. I separated the boy from her, which was Elvis. I moved Elvis back into his home, which is, where is he? Where is he? Where is Elvis? Um, you see Elvis? Where's Elvis? Here he is. Here he is. Let's have a look and see how Elvis is doing. Look at that, he wants food, man. Look at that. He's one of these animals that likes to feed while he's breeding. And he gave us three good clutches last year. And he's about 1300 grams. So he's becoming a powerhouse male for me. 
uh, give them another two or three hundred grams. But the fact that he can eat and breed is wonderful. Uh, wonderful, that wonderful. So I cleaned up his rub, I gave him some fresh water, and he's only been in there literally probably about six hours. And look, he's ready for food. <laughs> it's brilliant. So tomorrow, hopefully, he's going to take food, which will sustain him on his breeding journey. So he's looking good. Now notice with the snakes that aren't in shed, look what I'm doing here. Can you see that all the snakes that aren't in shed, they don't have any condensation on the inside of the rubs. See how dry they are? Now, there could be a problem there. You might think that's a good thing, but it might be that they're too dry. So the only way to check is to actually put this on there. So why don't we just put, let's put one in here. So I'll put this one on Snape and see how he's doing. Now I can see, have a little look inside. He's actually having a bath. He's bathing himself at the moment. You see that? Now that might tell me that he's not getting enough moisture. And again, he's opposite the heater. So I've got to now check with my uh, digital readout. How much humidity is he getting? If he's not getting enough, I've got to do a couple of things. I believe that there it takes about 15 minutes to get a proper reading. Um, should I put it there? We'll come back to him, Mandy. But I'm troubleshooting at the moment, and I think it's constantly having to adjust all the time because the outside temperature is changing, the outside weather's changing, and you might have the perfect humidity one day, you might have the imperfect one the next day. So it's a bit of a balancing act. So it's so important to monitor every day. We'll come back to that. I'm hoping it's going to be 50, if it's 50%, I'm going to be happy. If it's below 50, I'm going to have to do something about it. But we'll leave it there and come back to it. But I've got some other things I want to show you. Perlo we've covered. Now here we've got Korma, who's our banana, pastel banana. She's in deep shed and she's doing a little bit of bowl wrapping. She's about 1300 grams, and I reckon, give her another three or four months, she might be big enough to breed with. But can you see how she's in blue there? And how faded she is? Now, she's already created extra moisture. Can you see the moisture on her substrate? So she's obviously getting ready to shed. And I gave her a little bit of a spray down myself when I was cleaning this morning just to assist her to shed out. So I'm hoping I've got the humidity right there, but there isn't, there is a little bit of contact. Can you see the condensation on the inside? Can you see that? That's good, because if she's in shed, I want to see a little bit of condensation on the inside. If anything's in shed and there's no condensation, that tells me I've got my humidity wrong. So, Athena's got a little bit of condensation. Korma's got condensation. The pastel clown is in shed. She's got condensation, and I haven't done nothing to her. She's done it all herself, Mandy. There she is. And she basically just spills her water bowl as she wants to, and she creates her own humidity levels. So I'm pretty certain that she's done perfect sheds as well. But we can check her. Now below her, this is the test of whether you've got your humidity right in each rub. Here we have Jupiter, who's our butter 100% head clown. Now, if you have a look inside, I believe she's shed out for us. Now, if the shed is all broken up or still on her body, you know there's a problem with humidity. But if I can just borrow her shed. There we go. She's given me the perfect shed. See that? Absolutely perfect. If I open that up, I can open this up and show you that is an unbroken perfect shed. That is your success, that you've, you've got your humidity right in there. And that, to be honest with you, she's such a good housekeeper, she's done most of it herself. But there you have it, perfect shed. That's what you're aiming for. That's a good indication that your humidity is right. So we'll just get rid of that. Now, what was the other one I was going to show you? Daisy is in shed. Look at that. She locked up the cookie two days ago. So we got him in there just in the nick of time because I think when they're in shed, they're less likely to lock. But she'll shed out. And you look, she's also bowl wrapping. She's building follicles. Now, if you look at the size of her body, 
you see that where the eggs are going to be growing she's cooling and she's using the water bowl to cool her follicles so the follicles can grow you want cooked follicles if you get too much heat on those follicles they can cause them to be infertile or they can also cause them to slug out or uh, boob eggs and we'll talk about boob eggs another time but a boob egg is an egg that might well have a small baby in it but it looks like a boob and um, they do survive but often they can have kinking issues or problems feeding when they're born so sometimes they're fine just small animals that you've got to be very careful to bring up um, but that can be avoided sometimes if you get your humidity and your temps right okay below her we've got cappuccino who is also building follicles have a look at this one now she's chosen to stay on the heat mat at the moment but she's just moved into shed you can see she's starting to go a little bit grey but she's huge again I reckon she's three thousand grams three kilograms and again she's created her own moisture see how she's I sprayed her down as well this morning just to help her she's not as wet as the other girls so I thought I'd give her some assistance okay and then the only other one I think I was going to show you was this one here which is Cleo who's our big banana spider let's have a look at her now what she done here she's got a very interesting way of shedding out she gives me perfect sheds I haven't sprayed her out she's created all her substrate wet substrate by herself she's moved her water bowl towards the hotter part of the temperature on the heat mat and that will then evaporate the water into the rub and create extra moisture so she's doing her own self-regulation fantastic and no need to spray her so can you see the, how important it is to have the flexibility of having those bowls to be movable because they'll move them where they want them the animal is normally its best carer if you allow it to care for itself We do have some other babies that are shedding out, not too many, but I think we'll go back to the table and just cover a few more points before we wrap up. So thank you, Mandy. Now we're gonna check this here, won't we, Liv, before we go. So 49, you know I said I wanted it to be 50 at least, Mandy? Mm -hmm. It's dropped below that. So that's the reason why he sat in his water bowl. He's getting his own <laughs> moisture from the water bowl. That's another reason to have water bowls. Now I can spray that down and change that a little bit and help him out or I can move my heater I've got to make an adjustment we will come back to that if we've got time at the end of the film um, to see exactly where it is because it's still falling it might even be much lower so that's the benefit of having regular monitoring of what's going on and having the right digital readout now there's three or four different instruments out there that you can choose from when we first got our snakes Emily bought one of these little small discs and I think it was called a uh, they call it an exoterra humidity disc and you can pick them up for less than five quid but after a few months water gets inside the disc and there's a paper disc inside that gets wet and there's a spring that gets rusty and the dial doesn't work correctly after about six months so if you've got one of those I would actually say consider upgrading to a better one. Now we picked that digital one up for five pounds on a sale. So I got that digital readout for fiver. But if you want a really good one, Zoom Med do one at 13 pounds, you get it online. And that's called a digital temp combo. And it has what they call a um, probe. It'll have a probe with it like ours. So it's very similar to ours. If you want to want to go up market and get a really good one, spend nearly hundred quid, you get what they call a hygrometer thermo, thermal and humidity and humidity and temp controller and they're about 100 pounds so there's a few ideas for you on that one but let's come back to uh, things that can happen if you get your humidity wrong and if it's too damp that can lead to a number of issues and challenges for us and for the snakes so if there's too much water on your substrate and the snake sits in that for too long it gets what they call scale rot on its belly and it's its belly scales that are too wet all the time and you get this horrible scale rot and it can be treated 
So don't panic if you've got that, just go and see a vet and get the um, vet to have a good look at it and they'll guide you and give you the right medication. So the other thing that can go wrong is if it's cold and wet, snakes can come down with respiration is issues, infections, RIs they're called, which can be fatal and can kill them. And they're highly contagious, so if one snake comes down with it, it can spread through your collection like wildfire. So getting your humidity right is essential. This is nothing to be messed around with. You must do your level best to get the uh, humidity right and your temps right together. Very important. Now a snake does have tolerance levels, as you can see from my snakes. They make their own adjustments if I mess up. But I don't rely on that. I've got to still do my good husbandry and make sure that I'm on it. Um, if a snake gets too wet and too cold and is feeling, you know, starts to get these issues, you'll find that if it goes off its food and begins to, um, I guess if it's not digesting its food correctly, it might start to regurgitate food. And that's normally a symptom that something's not right. Because if you imagine, like, if you're in your bedroom and you're getting quite cold because it's really icy out there and you put on the heater and you wake up in the morning, you've got a really dry mouth. It's because your, 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 your um, respiration tubes need to be lubricated and that's why we like to drink regularly and having those water bowls if, if a snake has an issue it'll drink water more so watch any snake that's drinking a lot because it means your humidity might be out, out of sync but we need to make sure that their, um, their, their, their respiration tubes are all nicely lubricated that will assist them for eating digesting and feeling comfortable the other thing that's a bit of a giveaway is have a look at the eye caps on each of your snakes. If there's a degree of denting in those eye caps, that's a sign of dehydration. And that means that your snake is not getting enough moisture. So study their eyes, have a look carefully and see whether there's any denting. They call it dented eye caps. And that's normally due to dehydration. Um, so how can we, um, what can we do to solve these problems? Well, I think we've covered quite a few there. So think about bigger water bowls, think about changing the water more often, particularly cold water is good to go in there because it can get very hot in there for them. So it allows them to cool off when they're building eggs. So you've got to think about that. Um, make sure that you're using your um, uh, regular checking exactly what is going on with the percentages as far as moisture is concerned so you can keep an eye on that. Um, the other thing that they can do is they can wee a lot, tip their bowls over, they can obviously the weather can go against us and the um, levels of humidity can go up and down so there's so many variables that can affect all this and literally uh, you've got to be on it so if you see your snake that's done a lot of wee and it needs to be cleaned up otherwise it's sat in that for days that isn't going to help it. You can end up getting too much moisture and it's not the right kind of moisture as well. So it's good to monitor that and keep that clean. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. Um, shed issues we spoke about. Um, spray down with water at 85 degrees if they are happy to do that. You can spray the bedding so you don't have to spray the snakes. So some snakes get a bit skitty and frightened. So what I do is I spray down the substrate rather than the snake. You can put in sphagnum moss, particularly in really dry climates. Sphagnum moss is really good because it holds the water. Some people use sponges as well, but be careful with that, that the snake doesn't swallow any sponges uh, or gets it stuck in its throat. But if you're gonna use sponges, then be careful with that approach. Um, cocoa husk is an excellent substrate to help with moisture control. So a lot of people, since they move across to cocoa husk, their humidity levels are much easier to regulate because you can spray them down um, ventilation is important. Now you've noticed in here I've put lots of holes in my rubs um, and I think the reason for that is you need air circulation. If you put too many holes in then that can cause a problem because then water can escape but if you have less holes water can be kept in the rubs. So another way of controlling your water moisture levels is to have a look and see how breathable your rubs are and adjust accordingly. Right, we've only got a few minutes left, so we'll slide through the rest of these options. Um, let's have a look what we've got. Da, 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 da. 
Yeah, when you're placing your digital readout, avoid placing it near doors, heaters, or air conditioners. Check every one or two hours. Calibrate your hydrometer every year because they can go wrong. Get it calibrated. Uh, make adjustments regularly where necessary. And then tomorrow we're going to cover the eggs. So a big thank you to Joey for the questions that you've given us, Joey. I appreciate that. And hopefully the video today has helped. We'll have a quick look at the, um, the readout. Now we've had time. So it's staying at 48, so it's not a million miles out, it's a couple of degrees out, or a couple of percentages out. So that's good news, and we'll just give them a little bit of a spray down and maybe move the heater back. So thank you for watching us, thank you Mandy for being our camera lady. If there's any questions on this topic, please feel free to put some questions below and I'll be happy to answer those. And um, yeah, we look forward to catching up with you tomorrow. We've got some big plans, we're hoping to do a live Super Saturday chat where we can try and have a live conversation with one or two subscribers, but thanks for your support. Don't forget to subscribe and it's goodbye from New Forest Morphs.